Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a video all about my favorite fictional couples. This video is being made in paid promotion with Disney Book Group to celebrate the release of Ship It by Britta London. This book was just released on May 1st, so you can now go out and get yourself a copy. This book follows the story of this girl named Claire who is super into this TV show called Demon Heart. And when I say she's super into it, I mean like she writes fan fiction about this show. And her fan fiction is extremely popular, specifically one that's about the romance between the main character of the show and his arch enemy. Claire then attends a Comic-Con panel for the show and she mentions to the actor that she thinks that his character is gay and has a romance with his arch nemesis and he responds by just laughing it off which creates a whole slew of problems for this TV show and for their PR and it becomes a whole nightmare. They end up then hiring Claire to help them with this scandal and she then has to try and work through all of this with the actor who had laughed her off in the first place. This book sounds super interesting to me because in a way it's very much a mix of like fangirl and just like fan culture because we have like a character who writes very popular fan fiction and who's very immersed in fandom culture. And then fandom culture is a very big thing in our society today. And I feel like this scandal with this TV show is something that I've seen happen with so many different TV shows in almost exactly the same way. So I think it's really exciting to get to see a book that's actually written about that because honestly I can name you like so many shows that have done this exact thing but I don't think they've ever hired the fan fiction writer to help them with this scandal. So we'll see how that turns out. But yeah I'm really excited to read this because again like I said the concept I think is something that happens a lot but nobody really writes about so I'm very excited to explore that. Also another thing before we move on can we just mention how cool the cover of this book is because first of all the like dust jacket is really cool the back has like another couple it's very cute but then you take the dust jacket off and like look at that that bear cover is so cool. I'm sorry, I just really like pretty books. <laughs> but anyway, since the concept of Ship It revolves around shipping these two characters together, I am going to be sharing with you all some of my favorite fictional couples. So I've been wanting to make this video for a very, very long time, and honestly, I don't know why I haven't made it yet. <laughs> like seriously, I've wanted to make this since I started my channel like almost three years ago at this point, and I don't know why. I have no idea because this is honestly one of my favorite things to talk about because I get very, very invested in fictional couples, probably far more than I should. But I also think that it's because I'm very picky when it comes to fictional couples or just like romance in general. Like I'm just very, very picky about it. And I don't like that many fictional couples. Like I'm just so particular with the ones that I like and then I invest everything in those. So this is not like a huge list, but I think it has gotten decent sized because at least recently I have read a few more books that have gotten me unexpectedly invested in some couples, which doesn't happen to me very often. So yeah, I have a decent sized list of some fictional book couples. And then I also have two that are from TV shows because I realized I was just going to make this just book couples, but then I realized that like two of my all-time favorite couples are from a TV show, so I can't not include them, so we're going to. <laughs> but without any further ado, because I've rambled on enough, let's get into my favorite fictional couples. The first couple that I have to mention I think is fairly predictable because I talk about them a lot and I talk about this book a lot, and that of course is none other than Ari and Dante from Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I read this book right before I started booktube, so it was right when I had gotten back into reading for the first time, and I think in part the time that I read this book definitely impacted how much I fell in love with these characters. But Ari and Dante are just so good and precious and I really like their romance because they're both teenagers and they're very young and I think that a lot of like the romances that I read in YA, especially in fantasies, they feel kind of like older. Like I think about City of Bones and I think about Clary and Jace and Clary has like just turned 15 in that book or something. Maybe she turned 16, I don't remember. She's very very young but they don't necessarily act that young sometimes and you kind of forget how little they're supposed to be. But in this one, it felt genuine. Like they genuinely feel like teenagers. And I think that's one of the aspects of their relationship that I like so much. And I just like the way that it's developed and explored how it blossoms from a friendship because friends to lovers is another one of my favorite things. And yeah, it's just a fantastic, adorable, heartbreaking, but also heartwarming romance. And there are so many scenes between the two of them that just make me so happy and yeah, I adore them so, so dearly, and I feel like I never shut up about this book, but I just want everyone to read it. <laughs> the next couple I have to mention here is actually a very recent edition. I just read this book last month, two months ago maybe, and I fell in love with the characters in general, but this one specific couple, they have melted my heart. <laughs> and that couple is none other than Zaley and Enan from the Children of Blood and Bone series. Okay, so listen. <laughs> I am obsessed with Zaley and Enan. They are so perfect 
and they have like the exact dynamic that I like, like the perfect amount of angst and drama and I so desperately want them to be together and I just, I need it to happen. <laughs> I don't want to get into spoilers with the book obviously, but like there are so many scenes in here that just melt my heart completely and they remind me of my favorite fictional couple of all time, which I will get into later because they're also on this list. But yeah, I just, oh my gosh, I read this and I started reading it and I was like, this is, this is everything I love. The fantasy is fantastic. The world, the magic, the politics of this, like everything about it is incredible. But the romance was something that I was not expecting to even find in here. And oh my God, they're like now one of my favorite couples ever. I mean, everything about this book is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It's not just like something you should read for the romance. You should read it for far more than just that. But oh my God, it, it has destroyed me. <laughs> the next couple on my list is another one that's more of a recent edition, one that I honestly was not expecting to fall for because I wasn't even planning on reading this book before I read it, and I'm honestly so happy that I decided to read it because I would have missed out on one of my favorite fictional couples ever. Like, they're probably, probably like top three on my list, honestly, um, and that is Laia and Elias from the Ember and the Ashes series. Elias and Laia are my everything. Again, their dynamic is very much similar to Azalea and Enon's in that it can be like sarcastic and witty and bantery at times, but also they're both such emotional and like deeply tortured characters. And oh my god, I live for it. <laughs> Don't even try and come at me and tell me that Helene and Elias should be together because I will fight you. <laughs> I had to read this book for a YA class that I took last semester and so many people in my class liked Helene more than Laia and I don't understand that at all. My dislike for Helene is totally separate from like the love triangle aspect of this. I just hate her but just every single scene that they have in this book and especially in Torch, oh my god my heart is torn to pieces. I feel like neither of them can ever be happy and they're always just suffering so I'm always just suffering but I live for it. <laughs> Honestly just give me a couple who's constantly suffering so that I can also suffer because that's how I know that I love them. The other thing I really like about their dynamic is that it's very subtle and I don't really know like how to describe that without getting into spoilers but it's just like it's intricately woven into like the rest of the plot and I think that's what makes it so like great for me because I really like slow burn romances and this is absolutely one of them and I feel like some people say that it's like kind of insta-love but like it's not in my opinion because like that just doesn't happen. It's not insta-love. It's a slow burn romance and I just need to know what's going to happen to them because I feel like a reaper at the gates is going to tear my soul out of my body and just tear me to shreds and I'm not prepared but I can't wait. <laughs> The next couple on my list I feel like is another one that is extremely predictable, um, but that of course is Will, Tessa, and Jem from the Infernal Devices series. <laughs> These three are so precious. <laughs> so I used to be like hardcore team Will. Anyone who tried to tell me that Tessa should be with Jem, I just like completely wrote them off, like I just thought it was completely wrong. But then like as I grew up a little bit, as I got into like the final book, like once that one came out, I realized like how much I actually love the three of them together because their dynamic as a trio is just unbeatable. <laughs> like honestly, in my opinion, we genuinely do get a romance between all three of them. It's not just Tessa trying to choose between the two because she loves both of them and obviously they love each other because they're parabatized. So their dynamic is just perfect. <laughs> My favorite thing about this relationship is how much all three of them care for each other. Even though this is technically like a love triangle, there's no moment in this entire series where one of them tries to like outdo the other or hurt the other. Like they're always conscious of the other person's feelings whenever they're trying to like assert their feelings for the people that they love. And it just, oh my god, it it's so beautiful. <laughs> I get like kind of flustered when I talk about this book because I like don't really know how to communicate how much I love these characters because these characters are kind of what made me love reading so much. So yeah, it's very difficult for me to talk about them, but they're my OT3, like hands down. <laughs> Keeping on trend with the Mortal Instruments series, my other favorite couple from this series is one of my favorite couples of all time as well. And that of course is Magnus and Alec. I just picked up City of Bones because it was the easiest one to take off my shelf. <laughs> one of my favorite things about their relationship is absolutely the banter that they have, especially in the early 
earlier books with Alec coming to terms with his sexuality and trying to figure all of that out in the Shadowhunter world, their relationship early on is very like tumultuous and difficult, but they also really just have such great banter, mostly because Magnus is just hilarious and Alec is just extremely sassy. <laughs> the other thing I really like is the contrast between the two of their characters because Magnus is so like bright and vibrant and he just has such a full personality that totally lights up a room versus Alec who is very like moody and broody and emo honestly um and I just really like the mix of those two personalities in a relationship which is I think one of the things that really drew me to them but I think my favorite part of their relationship honestly is what's developed in like the later books how much they have grown as people because we get to see them go through so much shit honestly <laughs> throughout the entire series and they have so many problems that they have to work through and then we get into these later books and we see how much they've matured how much they've grown to love each other in a completely new way and I love getting to see that develop. They're definitely one of my like oldest favorite couples because I've had them with me for like so long and I think that's part of the reason they're so special to me. So yeah, they're fabulous and one of my favorite parts of this entire series honestly. All right, so I have one more book couple that I have to mention and then I'll get into my two TV show couples, but of course I can't make this list and not include another one of my absolute all-time favorite couples because Oh, they, they destroy me. And that, of course, is Kaz and Dinesh from the Six of Crows duology. I don't know how to describe what Kaz and Inej do to my heart apart from make me feel like I'm about to have a heart attack because that's how like panicked I get when I read about them because I love them so much. <laughs> I can't go into detail obviously because I don't want to spoil anything, but specifically in Crooked Kingdom. If you've ever watched my Crooked Kingdom review, um, you'll, you'll understand like what moments in there kind of just like broke me and put me back together because that's what they do to me. <laughs> Again, this is another relationship that I think just is very subtle within the entire story as well and it's another slow burn. It's one that's been developing for like a very long time. They have a very long history with one another in this case. And I also think this one's a bit different from other ones that I've liked because it's not like friends to lovers necessarily and it's not enemies to lovers either. It's very much like a I have this admiration for you but I also know that you could kill me and that makes me love you even more. Like that's how both of them feel about each other I think. <laughs> and yeah I just love everything about it and they're so different from so many other couples that I've seen and yeah I would happily let either of them kill me. They could both kill me like as a couple couple and I would thank them. <laughs> All right, so those are all of my favorite book couples specifically, but now I wanna mention my two favorite like TV show couples because, well, one of them is like my number one favorite ship of like all time, and then the other one is definitely like in my top five. So again, like I can't make this video and not mention them here. <laughs> but the one that's in my top five definitely has to be Korra and Asami from the Legend of Korra series. You see what I mean? Like how could I make this video and not include Korra and Asami because they're so perfect. <laughs> I also felt like it was like okay to include these in this as well because they are technically comics and like their relationship is definitely far more developed in the comics as well, which are fantastic by the way. You should definitely read them if you haven't. But Korra and Asami, I think, have one of the greatest like romance story arcs ever because they both started out in like such a different place from where they ended up and I love how they ended up there. <laughs> Again, I don't want to go into like too many spoilers with everything that happens if you haven't seen the show, which you really should if you haven't. This is another relationship that I think was another slow burn, which is another reason I like it so much, but I also wish that we could have gotten like more development in the TV series and I'll forever be bitter at Nickelodeon for what they did, but I'm really happy that the comics are able to develop everything that I want. <laughs> Again, their personalities kind of like don't necessarily match up exactly. They're very different. Like Korra is like super tough, definitely inside her own head a lot of the time, whereas Asami is definitely kick-ass, but she's also a lot softer and I just like how the two of them mesh together and they're perfect and I love them, so they had to be on this list. <laughs> and then of course, of course, my all-time favorite fictional couple ever, the one that my heart will forever long for, is Zutara from Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> As many of you know, I am obsessed with Zutara. They are my everything. They are the OTP that never was, that always should have been, and I'm forever bitter about it. <laughs> Zuko is like my favorite fictional character of all time, and Katara is definitely up there as well. But yeah, their dynamic on this show is everything that I ever wanted to happen, and I'm so sad. <laughs> when I was talking about Children of Blood and Bone earlier, the reason that I like Zaylee and Enon so much together is definitely because, to me, they are like Zutara. Like, they are what I want from Zutara that we didn't get 
because Nickelodeon hates us. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I really like Zaylee and Enan because they have a very similar dynamic. So yeah, I'm just gonna be forever heartbroken about Zutara. It's just my perpetual state. It's how I have to accept my life is going to be. <laughs> I grew up with all of my friends hating Zutara and absolutely being on team Aang and Katara, which like I love them together too, don't get me wrong, because I love Aang and I always want him to be happy, but they always like shamed me for my Zutara love and since I have joined booktube and like talked to other people online I have found out that so many other people like them too and I am not alone in this love so I just feel so happy and understood now. But yeah, I would just like, I would do anything for this. I have tried so many times to read fan fiction. I've never found one that I've liked. I look at fan art way more than I care to admit. I just... I miss them and I want them and I'm so sad. <laughs> All right, so there you guys have it. That is it for my list of favorite fictional couples. I know that I get like very um, kind of inarticulate in this video because I really don't know how to describe how I feel about these couples. It's just like, feelings. You know those feels gifs? Like that's what I feel like whenever I talk about these and I don't know how to express that properly. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to hear about any of your favorite fictional couples in the comments down below. They can be ones from books or TV shows like I mentioned. Anything that you like. Do we have any of the same ones? Do you completely disagree with me on any of these? I would love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Once again, don't forget to check out Ship It, which is out now. I'll leave all of the info for it linked in the description box as well as the links to all of my social media if you want to follow me anywhere. But like honestly, please feel free to tweet me about any of these couples. Like, I will never shut up about them, especially Sutara. <laughs> but that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!